Hi and welcome to episode 42 of the Talk is Cheap show. Great to have you back. Hope everyone is well, safe and COVID free and that you're all following the uh, government's latest guidelines and regulations on terms of social distancing and groups, etc. Thanks for all your messages and your comments that you've been sending us. We really appreciate that. We're really grateful for the support. And um, so we continue. So, um, yeah, man, it's great. But before we go any further, it's my great pleasure to introduce my co-host and resident expert, Mr. Curtis Shaw from Curtis Shaw TV in the house. What are you saying, bro? We are top of the league, so we are top of the league. <laughs> What's yeah, happening, yeah. bro? I'm all right, man. What are you saying? What are you been yeah, up? I'm good. What have you been up to since last week, bro? Same old man, just working from home in the gym, putting out content on my channel as well, and just you know, obviously watch the Arsenal at the weekend. Great result. So yeah, just doing the same old man. Yeah, it was another great day up at the box park. Shout out mm. to part for um allowing us to use this salubrious surroundings and stuff yeah it was a great day man great day yeah, yeah but we're going to talk about that later um yeah. but first segment on the show we usually go through our news and notes a couple of stories hitting the news this week i guess mm. the, uh, the biggest one was concerning my friend and yours neymar and um <laughs> The spectre of racism rearing its ugly head again, this time in France. Uh, yeah. He versus Marseille game at the weekend. Mm. Bad tempered affair. Five men sent off. And it culminated in allegations by Neymar that he'd been racially abused by Alvaro Lopez. Um, Lopez uh, and Marseille have since rebutted that. They've issued a. Um, rebuttal statement saying that you know there's no room for racism and all the rest of it blah 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 um mm. before i ask you what you thought i'll tell you what i thought was quite ironic and um this goes back to something that me and you have discussed previously mm. uh, surrounding neymar who as everybody knows i'm a massive fan of <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i'll tell you what i found ironic about the whole racism incident with neymar was wasn't he the man who once said that he's not black Apparently, he's quoted as saying that. Isn't he? That's what the story. I mean, people who don't believe me, go and Google it, man. You know what I mean? I, I found out about that story years ago, and I must admit, when I read it, I was quite flabbergasted that he should say such a thing because mm -hmm. um, he's clearly a person of color. He's clearly mixed race, but you know, seems to be wanting to deny his blackness or say it with a pair. Um, so yeah, that was quite ironic for me. Um, but, but yeah, before I say anything else, what was your thoughts, Curtis, on that? I mean, the incident, um, I mean, I saw a story that the player who did it, um, that his phone number's been given out and he, apparently he's getting loads of like prank calls and threats and things like that. So I, I just got the impression that, you know, Neymar looked very agitated. He, you know, he ran over to the, to the official on the side of the pitch and he just looked like he didn't know what to do. And, and I think Neymar gave him a little slap on the back of the head, didn't he, or something? And yeah, I mean, some people were trying to say that he punched him in the head. Well, if that's a punch, then boy, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think he's in the right profession because he wouldn't have made it as a boxer. Because yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've seen little kids hit harder than that. I mean, yeah, for real, back of the head. I mean, but in all seriousness, though, I mean, listen, man, um, say what you want to say about Neymar. Um, I'm not his biggest fan in terms of his histrionics. Uh, yeah. In terms of playing, listen, playing ability, he's an outstanding player. Brilliant. He could be the best in the world in terms of talent. Could be. Um, he's probably just behind that, um, that Messi, and Ronaldo. Messi and Ronaldo and people like that. But you yeah. know, he's in that next yeah. level. You know, I mean, just beneath them, man. So his talent is extraordinary. Um, I'm not too enthused with Neymar the man, I must admit, based on what I've seen and my perceptions of him. You know what I mean? But mm. nevertheless, take away what I think about him. And if that is true, what he says, and I've no reason to disbelieve him, then it's horrible. And, um, horrible. you know, we spent the whole summer with this whole Black Lives Matter thing. And, you know what I mean? And it wasn't going to be long before one, a player somewhere had done something like this. You know what I mean? So it'll be very interesting to see what the French authorities do about this. You know what I mean? Because mm. if they find him guilty of doing it. I mean, presumably, Neymar's so confident. Um, he's saying that there are other people within earshot of what happened and he didn't get the support from the refs. Yeah. So it would be a massive story, not just in French football, but in world football, because 
Mm. The eyes of the football world will be waiting with bated breath to see what they do about this. Because yeah. if they punish him, if they deem that he's guilty of this, surely they'll have to throw the book at him, won't they? Yeah, you would think so. I mean, French football are going to have to deal with it. And obviously, Neymar's the biggest player in the French league. So, they'll be under a lot of pressure to act. Um, and, and, you know, if the guy is guilty of it, let's hope let's hope they act accordingly. Yeah, man. I mean, listen, he's denied it. So, you know, I mean, we can't... Um, we don't know. Uh, mm. Only the people that were involved really and truly know what happened. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, I'll be keeping an eye on that story for sure. Um, mm. So, we'll wait and see what happens there. Uh, other things at the weekend, uh, I guess we should big up our big friend. He comes on the channel regularly, Anthony Yard. Yeah. Lions in the camp. Lions, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He had a good win at the weekend. Mm. Um, stoppage in the sixth round against a tough opponent called Dex Spellman, who previously had never been stopped. Um, so now Anthony's going to go on to fight for the British title. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, man, we wish him all the best. He's a, he's a big friend of the channel. Always gives us great content. Um, so yeah, man, big up to Anthony. And I should also yeah. say, while we're on the subject of boxing, um, big up also to Dan Aziz. He's another one who comes on the channel quite regularly. Uh, mm. Super guy, super boxer. Um, and he defended his English title recently. So yeah, man, that's, so that's, that's good. Yeah. yeah. AFTV, man, we're, we're mixing company with some of the best fighters in the country. So that's great, man. Yeah, okay, man. Okay, so moving on then. No further ado. Uh, our transfer update, our regular feature. Yeah. Um, I guess we should kick things off, man, um, with the eggshell news. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> I mean, listen, at the time of filming, he hasn't actually signed yet, but to all intents and purposes, it's going to happen, man. It's mm. going to So, um, you know, I mean, the floor is yours, my man. What can it, I mean, we're repeating the same thing, aren't we, with the Aubameyang thing? They, I just want to see it announced. Um, do you know what? I think this would be like. It's going to happen, though, man. I think this, this, this. Gonna yeah, happen. yeah, it's going to happen. I think this, this, tr like this contract, would be a real benchmark in Arsenal's like moving forward because in previous years we've always lost our best player. You know, Alexis Sanchez only signed one contract to Arsenal. You know, we lost Van Persie when he really reached the top of his potential. So I think to keep Aubameyang, and there's these stories saying that he rejected Inter Milan and apparently Barcelona were looking at him. So I think it sends a big message out to football that Aubameyang is staying and the club just need to build around him. So uh, it's a shame the announcements took so long because I think a little bit of the excitement has gone out of it now. But, you know, it will still be a huge occasion when it happens. Yeah, agreed entirely with that. Um, listen, man, I watched a segment on TV earlier um, and Kevin Campbell was on Sky and he was calling it the signing of the season. And I would agree with that. Mm. You know, I would agree that's a signing of the season so far. You know yeah. I, mean? I mean, you know, his body of work over the past couple of seasons is tremendous. Um, yeah. He's a club captain. He's, a, he's the main man, you know what I mean? And um, this is great news, man, for everyone in an Arsenal fans. You know what I mean? Arsenal shirt, it's a, it's a great day. Yeah, man. I see you got the new shirt on there, by yeah, the man, way. I'm rocking that, bro. You know what I'm I mean? Rock, I'm rocking the... I'm, mine's about 10 years old, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, listen, man. You mean you, you're, you're riding for the club, so am I. Yeah. I, bought, uh, I bought this shirt the other day, man. I really like it. It is a nice yeah. shirt. And when I heard about the Aubameyang stuff, I thought, yeah, man, let me celebrate by um, wearing the shirt. shirt. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure, given my age, that I'll go as far as getting Aubameyang on the back. But, nah, uh, nah. I'm, I'm perhaps a little bit old for that. But hey, man, I'm enthusiastic all the same. Yeah. yeah man, the Aubameyang news, man, is um, it's, it's nice weather out there. The mood is good. We had a great win at the weekend. Yeah. The in the club is high. And... Um, a Bamiyang signing, man, just just com just compounds everything, man. Yeah, it's yeah. Brilliant, brilliant news. Yeah. But moving swiftly on, then, um, I guess the next biggest news um, on the transfer front, as far as Arsenal's concerned, is with the goalkeeper Emi Martinez. It looks like that pretty much looks done now, isn't it? That he's going to yeah. go to Villa. Yeah, he's sort of dotting the i's and crossing the t's. But um, the terms have been agreed. I'm hearing he's even out of medical now. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, yeah. So that's going to happen. Um, I'll let you go first. What's your thoughts on that, bro? I mean, 
From a purely a football point of view and an Arsenal fan point of view, I have to admit I'm disappointed because, you know, it is a luxury in football to have two top quality goalkeepers at the same club. So from a business point of view, I understand it. You know, he's he's pushing to be number one. He wants to be Argentina's number one. He's waited nine years at the club. He's had his opportunity and they, they obviously can't guarantee him the football that he wants. You know, they obviously still see Leno maybe slightly ahead of him because I think as good as Martinez has been, he's been great for 10 or 15 games you're probably looking at, whereas Leno's done it over, you know, a whole season. So I still think they'll be slightly in favour of Leno. So I think Martinez has done fantastic when he came in. I have to admit, I think... I did even feel more safe with him in goal than Leno, just purely because he's so commanding at taking crosses. His kicking seemed a little better. Um, but yeah, from a business point of view, I understand them moving him on. You know, £20 million for a guy who would have probably gone for 3 or £4 million last season if somebody offered it. Um, so I understand it, but I just hope the money that we generate goes towards a parte or someone like that, you know. They can't just be selling him and not spending it. They have to use that money for a big signing. So all the best to Emmy, you know, he's he's been Arsenal through and through. Clearly loves the club and uh wish him all the best, man. Yeah, I would endorse everything you just said there, man. Everything, yeah. Mm. Um I'm not so sure I would say he's a better keeper than Leno. Uh, no, no, I'm not saying that, but I, I just felt more safe with him in goal, like with the crosses and the kicking. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I hear that too. I hear that too. Listen, man, um, they're both outstanding keepers. Yeah. Uh, Martinez has been at the club for a long time, as he said. It's nine, ten years now. Mm. Uh, up until recently, he's never really been able to force his way into the side on a regular basis. He got his opportunity when Leno got injured against Brighton earlier in the year. Um, he come in, he done a fantastic job, and he was consistently good, wasn't he? It wasn't just like yeah. a couple of games or whatever. He, right throughout that whole period, he was outstanding. Um, so I knew that Arteta was going to be faced with a conundrum this season. Yeah. Um, now that Leno's back, I mean, he's the established number one. Um, so how do you say to Martinez? Um, well, actually, thanks, but you know, you're going to have to go back to back on the bench. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, especially um, at this stage of his career, like you said, he's pursuing um, Argentina. He wants to be number one there, I'm sure. Yeah. So he wants to be playing every week. Um, so, you know, and he's he's, uh, he's put it out there, isn't it? He's put it on Front Street that, listen, man, unless I can get regular game time guaranteed, I'm going to have to pursue options elsewhere. And that's what he's done. So I can't knock him for that at all, man. Yeah. Let's be honest, me and you are in the same position. I'm sure we would have done exactly the same thing. Most mm. of them out there would have done it. So yeah. it's a shame that we can't keep the two keepers. Um, of course. Leno is the established number one. Um, so, you know, I can't criticise Arteta for that either. Um, so, yeah, man, one of them had to go. Uh, I'll tell, tell you the only thing I'm slightly disappointed with. I, look, I see that... Um, that keeper left Bournemouth, went to Sheffield United, Ramsdale. I think he cost 20 million. Yeah. And I'm looking at Martinez going, he's a far better keeper than this guy. And the fact he's coming from Arsenal as well, I almost feel like we could have got a little bit more money for him. But I suppose... Yeah, we could have held out for a bit more, but I think the problem with that is if you hold out for too much more, then you mm. might lose the opportunity to sign him. The likes That's of him, yeah. might go elsewhere. And then you're basically deprived yes. on the man of uh, a move and an opportunity to get first team football. So I honestly yeah. think we'll look to that and thought, you know what, in the interests of Martinez and everybody else as well. Because let's be honest, man, if you'd have kept him on and he's upset and he becomes disaffected, you don't really want that in the... Um, no, you don't want that in the yeah, dressing room. way to treat a guy that's um, been a loyal servant to the club. So I think that yeah. that was the reason behind why I also probably didn't push for more. But um, Yeah, yeah, I get anyway, uh, it goes with our blessings. I wish him all the best. Um, the only game that we don't want him to be brilliant in is the one that he plays against us. But hey, man, you know what I mean? You can imagine he's going to have a stormer in that game, can't you? <laughs> imagine if he saves a couple of penalties and becomes uh, match in that game. You imagine what the fallout will be. But hey, man, uh, that's hypothetical. Of course. Right, okay, moving on then. Um, the next uh, player that's for Arsenal that's been in the news concerning transfers is Lucas Torreira. I mean, we touched on this last week. 
Yeah. Um, but it's looking more increasingly like it could happen. Um, the latest rumour is him to Torino. Mm. That's two Italian clubs, you know what I mean? Um, so that's come in from recently or shown an interest in me recently. So I think this one's got legs in it. It looks like it's going to happen. What do you reckon? Yeah, because the, the Torino manager is actually his old manager from Sampdoria who we signed him from. So he's obviously, you know, retains an interest. He he also left Sampdoria, went to AC Milan, and that's why Torreira was being linked with AC Milan last summer. So I think from the moment Torreira got off the plane, he wanted to go back to Italy anyway. So grant him his wish. Um, I think Torreira is a half-decent player, but I think... We need a more robust, stronger midfield. And I think Torreira is clearly unsettled off the pitch. And we need to raise funds to go and get the likes of Partey and Awar. So I think if we can get 20-odd million for him, I think this deal will happen as well. Yeah, I mean, listen, man, um, we've discussed this before. Uh, Torreira has had, clearly had problems settling in London. Um, mm. He remains a quality player. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that there's a very good player in there. But, I mean, it happens in football, man. He just, for whatever reason, he's just not been able to settle at the club. He's always had his eye on a move to Italy, it would appear. I mean, he talks about it enough. <laughs> so, um, this might be mutually beneficial to all parties, man. And then, like mm. you said, if they get a decent amount of money, they can hopefully use that and the money that they raise from the um, Emiliano deal to fund party or, or whoever it is mm. that used to get. So, yeah. Again, it'll be sad to see him go, but you know what? Um, it's like I said, it's probably the best for both parties, man. Yeah. And what I call a mutually beneficial deal. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's also talk about uh, West Ham coming in for Kalasinac, right? Yeah. Um, I know you'd be saddened by that. <laughs> <laughs> He'll only have to get the tube. He don't even have to drive there. Just, you know. And he could yeah. still fulfill his security duties for Ozil as well. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, this one, man, Kalasinac. I've got to be careful how I say that, man. Yeah, I'm you really do have to be careful. I've been on the wrong side of it, man. You look yeah. so yeah, I mean, Listen, man, if, um, I don't know, they obviously haven't watched a lot of him because I don't know, I don't know why they would want him, but. Hey, no, man, you're being a bit harsh here, man. Yeah, man, come good. on. He's, he's not, a, he's not a Premier League left back, man. He's, I, I think the league's too. Yeah, I think so. I don't think so. I don't think he is, man. He is, I don't man. think he is. Like, in terms of like, all right, you can probably play in the Premier League, a low team in the Prem, but he's not going to... I don't see him excelling at West Ham. I think he would just be... You know, I think who have they got? They've got Masuaku, they've got Cresswell. I don't think he's really any better than them. And he's on a hundred-odd grand a week. I think yeah. if West Ham take him off us, I'll be, I'll be thanking them, I tell you that much. <laughs> so we better move on, man. You're yeah, we better move on. If I ever bump into him in London, I could have Don't probably be walking in there to any um like Bosnian coffee shops or anything. Uh, like, yeah. you know, when man might come after you, you know? uh, yeah. not ramping up. No, I know, I know they're proper. Yeah. But anyway, okay, that's it for that for the transfer update. Moving swiftly on again, then um, previewing the weekend's game just very quickly, the Fulham game, man. Um, mm. Match day one, first game of the new season. Uh, away to Fulham, uh, a 3-0 resounding win. I, I thought we got off to a bit of a shaky start, you know. I thought Fulham come out the traps quite hard at us. Um, yeah. But we settled down a bit and then we got that goal, man, from Lacazette. Big up Lacazette, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, then it seemed to be pretty much plain sailing. In the end, it was a very convincing performance um, with some very good performances in there, as I'm sure you'll touch on in a minute. But yeah, I was greatly encouraged, man. What's your thoughts? I think for an opening day performance, that was brilliant, you know, to keep a clean sheet, score three goals. Um, the two new signings, I mean, Gabriel got his goal, kept a clean sheet, made that slight mistake at the beginning, but from there, he just grew into the game and got better. I you think he got a new signing. You got the avenue uh, signing. Don't worry, I'm about to build up to that one. <laughs> You know what? A new, a new, a new signing from Egypt, man. You forgot him. Oh, oh, you're on about the Egyptian Messi centre <laughs> mid. <laughs> Do you know what? As El Nenny. El Nenny, yeah, El Messi. They're calling him now. Aren't they? <laughs> 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 oh Messi, that's it. Oh hey, Messi, you know, man. I'm on the back of his shirt. <laughs> oh Messi, man. You know what I mean? But no, yeah, yeah, let's just chop up about that, man. The new signings, man. Um, yeah. 
William. Gabriel and William. Your boy, William. I know you're excited. Yeah. Where do you want to go first, Gabriel or William? Let's go Let's William go. first. That's your yeah. mouth. Do you know what? As I say, you know, we can't go overboard because it was full of money. You can only, <laughs> but you can only beat what's in front of you. And I think, you know, he came in to assist. He, you know, he was taking the corners, the free kicks. He was getting on the ball. He, lo he looked to me like he'd been at Arsenal for two or three years. He didn't look like that was his first game. No. And I just think, and I've said it from before we signed him, I think this is a shrewd bit of business. And the one thing that surprised me was where he played him because I thought William was going to play behind the striker. The fact he played him on the right over Pepe, I mean, is he not feeling Pepe? I don't know. But that was the only disappointing thing, man. When I yeah, saw I, I thought I started to think to myself, man, Pepe must be looking at his long term future at the club and thinking, raw, man, you know what I mean? Because the mm. man comes straight in and usurped him out the team like that already. But yeah. anyway, carry on with your um your homage to William. No, no, but you know, just just in general, the performance was good. And I thought the attack, the way we linked up on the counter attack, and, and one thing I really enjoyed was um we had quality on the bench. You know, even though I would have liked Pepe to have started as well, you know, we brought Pepe on, we brought Danny Sabios on. We had more quality there. Um, you think Ozil, Guendouzi, not even on the bench. So I just thought the squad looked a lot stronger. The midfield was very good, again, El Elneny and Xhaka. Um, but I still have to admit, I think that midfield has to be upgraded. Um, mm. As good as those two are playing together, can they produce that over 38 games against bigger and better opposition? I know they played well against Liverpool in the Community Shield, but to keep churning that out, I'd, I still think both those players are quite limited. Um, so I would still like to to add to the midfield, but but well, they really, the that's why your boy Sabias got so upset with Eddie when he found out the team. I'm, I'm <laughs> telling you, the the man man was thinking, Yo, you've yeah. been ringing me up for oh. weeks. Yeah. I've just <laughs> left it down in Real Madrid. I've I've flown in and and El Nenny's playing centre yeah. mid. So, so I'm talking to him, man, man. When Eddie kicked that ball towards him, man. He thought, No, nah, man, I'm not having it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway, but yeah, um, listen. Um, couple of things you mentioned there. Yeah, man, the Willian, I must admit, he, like you said, uh, you made an excellent point there. He looks so comfortable in the team, man. Yeah. Um, and that's what you get when players are, are called Premier League tested. You know, sometimes yeah. we've got this tendency to want to go abroad all the time. Sometimes if you can get uh, a Premier League tested player that you know his quality and bring him in, then, you know what I mean, the hard yards have already been done. He knows what he's up against. Um, he knows what he has to do and he get on and do it. It's a bit like, well, we're going to touch on this later, the Corey, who was outstanding for Everton against Tottenham. It's a similar type of thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Looking at the likes of the Corey and you think, wow, man, why didn't we perhaps take a little look at him? You know what I mean? But anyway, we're going to talk about that later. Yeah. But going back to the game, yeah, man, I was, um, it was great to see William do his thing, man. He really looked quality, man. And I was thinking mm. about you. When I was watching, I was thinking, Rio Curtis must be loving this, man. You know what I mean? Because yeah, he's a baller. Oh. Uh, Gabriel as well, man. He had a bit of a shaky, a bit of a slightly shaky start. Looked a little bit touch nervous, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. The um, grew into the game, man. He looks solid. Look, it's to be it's to be expected, man. You know, coming yeah, from yeah. France, doesn't speak English. I, I thought um, I was quite glad for him that Mitrovic never started because he's a bit of a handful, man. And you know, um, I'm surprised that he didn't start. Man. Really surprised. A bit of a fou pas by Scott Parker there. Yeah, well, maybe he was, wrong. Maybe he was uh, not match fit or carrying an injury or whatever. But but you know what? I could never understand when managers do that. Surely you would start with the guy. Yeah, yeah, take him off. He's blowing up, not quite, at, you know, match fitness thing. You take him off. Mm. But do let him start the game. You yeah. Know? Um, and then, yeah. Know, he, that, that's his problem. That's his problem. Yeah, let him talk. I'm glad that he weren't starting. You know what I mean? Yeah. I rate Mitrovic, because, as I said on the show last week. Yeah. Uh, anyone else impress you then? I mean, Aubameyang, same old, same old. Get him on that left-hand side. What about Lacquer? You're not showing Lacquer no love. No, no, Lacquer played well, man. He needed that goal as well because, you know, this one thing we always say, I think every Arsenal fan rates Lacazette as a footballer. There's no question. Technical ability, understanding, his quality. He just got to score more goals. And even if you score 15 tappings like that, brother, we don't care. Um, just score goals. So I was happy for him.
Um, this is a good way to start the season. You know, him, Aubameyang. Aubameyang scores the trademark. You know, we used to call that the Thierry Henry finish on the left. You know, Aubameyang's kind of morphed into that finish now as well. So, no, I thought, I thought, I thought everyone in the team played well, to be honest. I don't think one Arsenal player yeah. put in a bad performance. They all did well. Yeah, man, I agree. Yeah, and it was a very encouraging start. So, moving on to uh, this weekend's game then. Ops of the week, West Ham at West home. Ham. West yeah. Ham, yeah. Our first yeah. home game of the season. Um, and you know what? It's probably a good time to play West Ham, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> because I, I saw their game at the weekend. Jeez. And they were dreadful. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they were. First game syndrome. You know, sometimes yeah. teams have an absolute shocker first game and then they bounce back the next game. So I guess we should be wary of that. We should. So they can't be as bad as that again. I don't think they Although we have got a very good record against West Ham. Yeah. Um, I was looking at some receipts earlier and, um, well, we beat them home and away last season. Um, yeah. I don't think we've lost... I think we've lost once to them in our le- in the last 10 times of meeting them. Mm. Um, and they've got yeah. some internal turmoil going on. We've got the captain... He's there throwing shade on the owners in wow, no. Twitter. No. You've got the players backing him, you know what I mean? You've got a lot of the fans coming out and saying how disenchanted they are with the way the owners are running the club. Uh, mm. They're not spending no money and, you know what I mean, they're not showing any sufficient ambition. Um, so what do you think, man? I mean, I don't know whether, I sh- I don't know, I don't know whether um, it's wise for me to be talking like this, but <laughs> I think we're going to slap them up. Honestly, I think we're going to... I'm I'm going for a three nil again. Uh, I watched that West Ham game and they. I'm going three nil, man. I think, I think they're there to be beaten heavily, man. I seen Andy Carroll and Callum Wilson twisting up their defence. I mean, Antonio, he's um he's always a handful to play against Antonio, so it'll be it'll be another test for Gabriel and them. Um, yeah. I, I think at, I think at home on the back of a three nil win against Fulham. Abameyang flying, new contract, you know. I, I think West Ham are going to get put to work, man. I'm yeah. telling you, I think we're going to turn them over. Well, our women's team slapped up their women's team 9 1. Um, Did they? Raw. It'll be a 9 1. But listen, yeah. I personally would be very disappointed if you don't get a win. Yeah. Again, put it like that. Because yeah. what I saw of West Ham last week, and again, I'm going to qualify what I said by saying that. I'm not expecting them to be as bad as that this week. No, no. But then I would also say that in recent times when we played West Ham, man, we, we have beaten them and beaten them quite comfortably. Yeah. Uh, but given that the um, the inner machinations of the club and how things are going, the turmoil that's going on there, and you know what I mean? It's clearly... I mean, did you see Mark Noble's face when he was... Yeah, all right. fans, man. You know what I mean? The man looked like he didn't want to be there anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I've expected him to get a brolly out. We have been mentioning it. Mention my man Ozil, man. Um, uh, you're hearing all this talk about, you know, he might be entered into the fray. Him and Gwen Doozy, um, they might get a chance to redeem themselves. Well, they haven't yet. You expect mm. to see them feature at the weekend? I don't in, think so. You know, I I honestly think that as much as Arteta said that, I still think behind the scenes he's trying to move both of them on. Um, as I said, we've got, got three weeks left. We've got, got three, three weeks, but yeah. I don't I don't see Ozil going anywhere. I think, you know, he's made it clear he wants to stay here. I don't think many people will try and sign him on that wage. Um, Gwenduzi, possibly, maybe someone will take him at a reduced price. Um, but it'll be interesting if both of them are here when the window shuts, how Arteta brings them back in. You know what? I'm going to say, I'm going to stick my neck out and say I want both of those guys to get the opportunity to redeem themselves. And listen, we're in enough competitions this season. As long as the likes of Ozil doesn't think he's too big to play in some of the cup competitions and doesn't show the right attitude, which I'm sure he won't, to be honest. Um, yeah. Top professional. I'm sure he'll, he'll put it in in training and show the right attitude. And I'm sure we'll see those two guys feature uh, yeah. in, in games throughout the season. So, And I hope that when they do get their chance, they take it and redeem themselves. And then whatever happens after that happens. But, you know, mm. it'll be good for everyone if, if they can um, come back, yeah. But just mm. to go back to the uh, West Ham game then. So let me press you for a result because we're moving on. We got Yeah, man. 3-0, bruv. They, they're getting put to work, bruv, I'll tell you. So to use a term that uh, Floyd Mayweather once used, 
You're saying it's easy work. Uh, yeah. Well, do you know what? I, I don't like saying that because... Um, no, I'm putting you on the spot, man. You just said, you've just been talking about 3 nil and this nil. Uh, yeah, yeah, go on, go on. I'm going 3 nil. They're going to get brushed aside, man, I'm telling you. Work. Yeah, we're, we're, we're firing right now, I'm telling you. We could, they can't cope with what we've got in attack. Okay. I, I What's your, give me your scoreline, then. I want to hear your scoreline. What's when your score like? Messi come out with him dreadlocks and that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Firing up Babylon. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> no, listen, man. I'm kind of with you. Um, you know, I'm looking at that game and I'm thinking, listen, if we don't get three points from that game, I will be seriously disappointed given, what, okay. given the way we're playing and the way they're playing and the early season optimism. The teams that we've beaten recently, for us to go and not get a result at home to West Ham, yeah, um, and inconceivably lose to them, that would be disastrous. So, mm -hmm. no, and I'm with you. Uh, as to the score, uh, two nil, man. Two nil. Two nil, yeah, 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 yeah. Obama and Laka, yeah, yeah. yeah two. Right. Okay then. Right. So moving on again then um, for our main topic of the day. I thought we would, might talk about the renewed optimism and the um, groundswell of real support that's rising up, you know what I mean? That's engulfing yeah. the club, you could say. You know what I mean? Um, we started off the season with a great win, We've added to the couple of trophies we won at the end of last season, and optimism seems to be at an all-time high, man. Mm. And um, people are talking about top four and all that. So I, what I want to know from you, man, is this the real deal, man? Is this um, the real deal or the false dawn? What are you saying? Do you know what? I would say at the moment, we're kind of somewhere in between. What I will say is um, I think the fans should be positive because, I, you know, I think fans carry a football club ultimately. And I think, you know, there's real belief. People believe in the manager. Our best player is is staying we're bringing in new players who are doing well. You know, believe in it, man. We've all got to push it. So, you know, I think the fans are right to feel positive and to be happy and smiling and, and believing in what they're seeing. What I will say is don't get overly carried away with it. You know, the FA Cup was an amazing achievement, something that I didn't really see happening, how bad we'd been last season. But that has to be a springboard. You know, as, as we said before, in 2017 under Wenger, we won the FA Cup. We never built on it. We actually got worse after that. So that FA Cup, you know, only means so much. So it's vital that the club build on this and we have to go beyond that. I don't want Arsenal to just be a decent cup team that can play well every couple of weeks. They've got to produce it in the Premier League. So I think... We're not the real deal, and it's not a false dawn. We're somewhere in between, but it is looking positive. Finish the transfer window with a big signing, and I think we can achieve something big this season. Yeah, yeah, I would tend to agree with that. But uh, you know what? I'm going to be perhaps a little bit more optimistic than even you are because mm. I'm looking at the way he set the team up. Yeah. Right? Uh, I'm looking at the attitude of the players, and I'm seeing different things this year to what I've yeah. seen before, uh, in recent years anyway. Um, and like you said, we don't want to get too carried away because I was talking to you earlier and we were reminiscing that uh, on the first game of the corresponding season last season, we went away and beat Newcastle. Yeah. You know, we were saying, yeah, yeah, man, you know what I mean? To go away in Newcastle in your first game and to mm. see the result there, that shows that Emre's taking us in the right direction. And yeah. then that happens, the club imploded uh, a couple of months later and he got the sack and the rest is history. But, I must admit, I'm seeing some different things. Mm. Even that little touchline spat um, before the, the game on Saturday kind of shows me that the energy in the team is a little bit different, man. You know what I mean? Mm. Would that have happened um, under Emery? Or so ago, you know what I mean? Mm -mm. Um, maybe the players have got a little edge to them now that, you know what I mean, they're a bit more hyped up. Maybe yeah. the right, you know what I mean? I might be reading too much into that particular incident, but even taking that away, I'm just looking at the attitude of the players. They seem happy as well. I mean, I'm sure you saw it, that little cameo by Holdinho. You know what I mean? That little cameo. 
<laughs> Rob Holt Jr. Really like congratulate him and laugh with him, and you know what I mean. They they yeah. seem happy in that moment, man. You know what I mean? They, everything seems to be the energy seems right, the vibe seems right. You know what I mean? Yeah. The juxtaposition of the club right now, man, seems in the right place. Uh, and I think it's the board, they've got a crucial part to play in this. Um, nice. They need to support the man. I mean, I was watching my brother's show. Shout out to brother Robbie, obviously. Yeah, man, big His transfer daily show today. And he was talking about the fact, the facts, big facts. That, um... Cronky. not spent no money. Not a penny. Yeah. No, no. Remember when COVID first hit and he was saying, yeah, man, I'm going to put my hands in my pockets and help us throughout and, you know what I mean, and spend some money. Where is it, man? It's in America. <laughs> <laughs> in that new stadium is building, man. Five, 500 million. Yeah, wow. yeah. How come he ain't showing none of that love over here? What's going on? We're the, we're the side, think, we're the uh, side uh, chick, man. We laugh about this, you know, but I think, that is a crucial element to Arsenal's continued success. Mm. He's got to be backed in the transfer window. You know what I mean? If Arteta goes to him with a short list of players and says, listen, these are the guys I've identified that can take this club forward and win things. They've got to put their trust in the manager and give him the funds in which to get those deals across the line. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a crucial part of how the club is run. You know what I mean? That's why Pep and Klopp and all those guys have been able to enjoy the success they've had. It's not just because they're great managers or they're great talkers and they, or they're good at working with young players. You need, you know what I mean? It's like any other business, man. You, you need, you know what I mean? You need that financial input. Yeah. You, know I mean? you need the resources being able to do the job properly. Well, what's your thoughts on that? Do you know what it is? I think we're in a bit of a difficult position at the moment where we've got like a lot of players who you would call like average players who are picking up big wages. And you can see how difficult, where, you know, apart from Martinez, who hasn't even been an out yet, we haven't actually sold anybody this summer. Or, although Mikatarian, you know, left, but we didn't even get a penny for Mikatarian. You look at all these Socrates, Kalasinac, Mustafi, all these guys who you would probably sell in an ideal world. Nobody really wants them because if you are interested in them, you're going to go, well, I'm not going to pay you a lot of money for him. And then on top of that, they're on a big wage as well. So we're struggling to get rid of them. So our wage bill is so high now that to go and bring it further big players on big wages, it is difficult. And I think, I think they're in a position where they've got to sell a few players before they can go and sign somebody like a Partey or someone. So... It's going to, I think yeah. it'll go right up until the end of the window before those kind of deals happen. You make an excellent point because you know why, and I'm going to reference that Tottenham game again. When I was uh, looking at that game at the weekend, Tottenham and Everton, sorry to speak yeah. so much about Tottenham, but this is a valid point. Um, I've looked at that Tottenham side compared to Everton and they look stale, man. They look stale. I was saying to my brethren, Toby, shout out Toby, by the way. Uh, yeah, man. Big Tottenham fan and a good friend of mine. I was saying, your side, I could tell that Everton were going to beat you straight away. That Everton had a certain yeah, impact. The edge about them, yeah. They had a certain edge on them, a bit like what I was talking about with us earlier. I mean, they looked like they wanted it, man. Mm. Those signings, the Corey, uh, Yames, look at that midfield with Alan in there. All them, man, they brought a certain energy. Yeah. And then, man, puffed up their chest and they were saying, listen, we're here to win today, man. You know what I mean? And yeah. Spurs didn't have that, you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, we've been getting a bit of stick by... Uh, <laughs> 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 we've getting a bit of stick by that wider troops, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Last week you were there bigging this man up, you know what I mean? Saying what a stand-up guy is. And then yeah, oh, man. find out that the man's throwing shade on us. <laughs> man, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. But... If we're gonna, I'm listen. I'm not here to defend Mourinho, man. But no. come on, bro. We're defending ourselves, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, but what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is, you could see that those lack of signings or bringing any um, quality into the side have affected Spurs straight off the bat. Mm. They look flat. They look like a team that's stale and in desperate need of some new blood. Now it's up to them. They're gonna do what they're gonna do. So I'm not really that bothered. But I, I'm just. Using that as an illustration of the point I'm trying to make, which is that um, you do need your board to back the manager and to bring in the right players, man. Um, yeah. So what's your thoughts on that? Huh? 
Yeah, man. Um, do you know what it is? Look, people always people always fire this Mourinho thing back. You have to look at it like this. When Emery was in charge, we was in disarray. I think every fan wanted him out the door. When we was looking at the list of potential replacements, I didn't hear too many people talking right. about Arteta at the time. Let's no. face it, the guy had never managed. Why would you be saying him? People were more looking at, you know, Ancelotti and Allegri and Mourinho. These are serial winners who are proven. And you can't tell me at that time that Mourinho wasn't a viable candidate for the Arsenal job. People talk about, oh, you know, he dissed Arsene Wenger and things like that. But they were rival managers who, you know what I mean? What do you expect? You're not going to be best friends with a guy you're in competition with. So mm. I never really cared about that. Yeah. This guy was a serial winner, 25 major trophies in his career. And yet people are saying, oh, I can't believe you wanted Mourinho. At the time, to me, that was a viable option. Now, we've gone with Arteta, unproven, but he's made a very good start at Arsenal, you know. He's won the FA Cup. He's brought renewed optimism. You can see he really cares about the club. He played for the club. So he's made a very good start. But I think people have to understand it is only the start. We haven't finished. We, You know, we, we finished eighth last season. We got knocked out to Olympiacos in the Europa League. Yeah. We have to put some balance to this, you know. Tottenham finished above us last season. Yeah. You know, so I don't see why, you know, Tottenham lost the game the other day and, and I'm delighted. You know, I think Everton, as you say, Everton's midfield. I actually think Everton's midfield is better than our midfield. But that's a whole mm. other debate. You know? like, uh, we play Everton. That is a game. That's a tough game, bro. I'm telling you. I mean, so we can laugh at other teams and say this and that. Yeah. But Everton ain't no joke. And this is what I was saying uh, in last week's show. We both said, actually, so I'm not going to try and claim the glory for it. But we said that the likes of Everton, Wolves, Leicester, you know what I mean? These teams are going to mount a challenge this season, man. Um, they're going to be in the shake-up for those top four places. Um, so it's not going to be easy, you know what I mean? And um, the problem with people like troops that I see anyway, is that these guys, they need to rein in their expectations a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's fine and dandy to get, you know, optimistic and, you know what I mean? Everyone's, you know, like I said, the vibe is good and we're riding that wave. That's good. But let's not get too carried away. Like mm -hmm. you said, they're running down Mourinho, right? And his credentials and all the rest of it. But unless... I'm incorrect on this. Didn't Tottenham, even though they weren't that good themselves, they still finished above us last season. And they beat us. Yeah, so, you know what I mean? What are you talking about, bro? You know what I mean? Yeah, and again, we're, we're, um, we're at a slight disadvantage here because the more we talk about this, right, the more the naysayers who watch his show are going to say, yeah, you lot are some undercover Tottenham, man. You wanted Mourinho, uh, this and that. But I'm just trying to keep a balance on the argument. You know what I mean? Of That's course. all I'm saying. And the other thing I would say as well is that, listen, you can't look at uh, Tottenham down the road and say that if Mourinho had managed Arsenal, it would have been the same thing. He's, he's managing different players, different characters, a different club. Mm. You, you know what I mean? You're comparing apples and pears. You can't do that, man. You know what I mean? It's not a like-for-like -like situation. No. What I would say is that Mourinho, in his time as a manager, has been very, very successful. And I'm pretty sure if he spoke to Arteta, he would acknowledge that and say, listen, if I finish my managerial career, if at the end of my managerial career, I can say that I've won the same amount that Mourinho has won, I would have done exceptionally well as a manager. More so, than, yeah. I mean, I'm going to leave it like that. It's all right then, man. Yeah. One game, bro. You know what I mean? Come on, man. Come yeah. on, man. Stop it. Behave yourself, troops, man. You know what I mean? One yeah. Game. Yeah, it's too. He's smoking. Yeah, I was smoking that high grade that day, man. He's getting ready for New York, isn't it, man? <laughs> well, no, I was thinking the other day, maybe like now because he's on his way to uh, New York, maybe when a man's put down the, uh, the weed thing and started drinking lean or something, man. <laughs> <laughs> getting ready for that Harlem life, man, you know? Yeah. <laughs> put down the lean, man, you know what I mean? Hey. But no, I mean, on a serious note, listen, uh, yeah, Troops, he's right. He, he he did say that Mourinho, you know, was going to have problems at Spurs. And so far, yeah, you know what I mean? But, you know, just temper your expectations for us at the moment. I mean, I mean we're a work in progress. I'm very encouraged by what I'm seeing. Yeah. Um, I'm loving what's going on right now. The vibe is good. The energy is good. 
Um, everyone seems on board. I'm liking that. But let's just, you know what I mean, calm down. Anyway. Let's just calm down, bro. You know what I mean? I mean. So, uh, I've got to push you, man. Is it the real deal or not? I think we're on the way to it. We're, we're on the way to it, but we're not there yet, which is why I'm saying, man, all this, you know, it's good to hype about the manager and people like the manager, but don't celebrate until you've achieved it. Do you know what I mean? We're not there yet. We're not in the Champions League. We haven't won the Europa League. We're not in the top four. I'm not going to be dancing and singing and, you know, until, until we've actually achieved what we want. So, cause I remember under Emery, man, 20 odd games unbeaten, singing we've got our arsenal back and a year later people wanted him out the door so yeah a year later then they were flying planes and saying yeah get him out you know what i mean and taking the mick out of him so, yeah, just, man, man have to relax to get on the roof you know, you what, know what i'm saying so yeah just yo enjoy it but don't get carried away man we win one game and 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 Tottenham lose one game and we we're, we're going crazy i think sometimes you know as arsenal we think about Tottenham too much, man. Don't worry about them lot, man. Just concentrate yeah, yeah. on ourselves and let's aim higher than them, man. I want to be back at the top. Yeah, yeah. You know what? You make a good point. I think a lot of people, right, they're using football to sort of pursue their own personal agendas and beefs, you know what I mean? And like, you know, say, oh, I said this to you and yeah, remember when I told you this and that. You know what I mean? It's, football doesn't work like that, man. You know what I mean? No. And, and like I said on this show many times before, uh, I'm an olden in this game, man. I've seen a lot of things. So I tend not to get carried away by personalities. So mm. as we touched on before, when man was saying, oh, we didn't want Mourinho because of what he said about Wenger. Come on, bro. They're two grown-ass men. Oh, you know, they were going back and forth. That's their beef, bro. You know yeah. what I mean? That's their thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, both of them have moved on from the clubs they were at. They're at, they're at different projects now, different stages of their life. So if you're asking me to hate on a man because he once said to Wenger, you're this, and then Wenger said, you know, he called Wenger a voyeur, and him and Wenger were pushing and shoving each other. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, but that's not really my thing. No, man. You the club, you follow the club. Exactly. You know I mean, you, you, you should be transfixed with what's going on on the pitch, man, not personalities. I told you before that um, you should be very careful of these people that you look upon as heroes, man. You know what I mean? That fanboy mm -hmm. Thing. You got you got to rein that in. You got to check the door, man. You know what I mean? Because it's not always what it's put up, put up to be. So yeah, man. But yeah. back to the original question. Um, I'm going to be a bit bolder than you on this one again. Go on, it's you're going for it, aren't you? I think this is the real deal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I had my uh, misgivings and reservations about Arteta, and I still mm. do have a few. He's, you know, yeah. but I'm liking what I'm seeing. Um, in particular, I like the attitude he's brought to the club, the energy. Um, he seems to have got the players on board. Um, I'm liking what I'm seeing there. I think that the fact that Aubameyang's about to sign is a big, massive coup for the club. Um, he represents this club, man, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Way, I mean, look at the way he's taking his goals at the moment, man, you know what I mean? That we want him to be at the forefront of the club and leading us into that next generation, and I think he can do that. Like yeah. I said, I, um, I want the board to show Arteta the financial support that he deserves. And if they can get that in sync, I think we can do big things. Definitely. So I think this is the real deal. And um, I'm going to throw it over, actually, to the viewer, the people who are watching this show. You uh, let us know what you think, man. Let's run a poll. Is this team under Arteta? Is Arteta the man? Is this new team the real deal? Let us know what you think, man. Yeah. Get up with your comments and your messages. and. Um, We'll see. We'll read it out next week. Yeah? Yeah. You have to that goes? I, think, I think we're on our way to being the real deal. I don't think we're quite there yet. I think we've got to fix that midfield for me. But but I'm optimistic. Well, you're not you're not taken with the Egyptian Messi, no? No, well, I'm not quite there with him yet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're not quite out to an any, man. I mean, he's yeah. been the... Um, figure of some ridicule amongst the fans myself included i'm not going to try and extra <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I, i've said one or two things about him that were probably out of pocket so, <laughs> so, you know what i mean i've got to take responsibility for that but at the same time man i'm a fair man yeah you are this thing now then you know what i mean hey more power to him you know what i mean he's doing would you, well. would you keep him i'm going to put you on the spot would you keep <laughs> him <again? laughs> 
<laughs> uh, yeah, I would. I would. would but, I mean, listen, um, I think that the signing of Partey, yeah. perhaps even over and above OR, yeah. is crucial to our long-term development and what we were looking to achieve in this season. So I think yeah. if we can get that one across the line, um, I mean, like I said, I'm sorry to harp on about it, but you saw the difference that the Corre made at the weekend. And Partey is that type of player, possibly even better. Yeah. Uh, so if we can get that kind of player in, man, I mean, there's no reason for to move El Nero and Yon. He could stay. He's a you squad know, player. He's yeah. in that position. So, yeah, man. Uh, and like I said, there's other guys who are at the moment seemingly out in the cold, but they could feature your likes of your own skills, like I said. Going doozy uh, and that, yeah. Doozy and people like that. They've got a role to play as well. Um, yeah. It's going to be a test of uh, Arteta's man management. Um, but so far, he looks like he knows what he's doing, man. I think the yeah. club is in good hands. And shout out to Jordan, because he'll probably be... <laughs> you know, he'll be loving it. Yeah, I, have, I have to admit, I have to admit um, I've never been a big fan of El Nenny, but I have to put that aside. You know, the last couple of performances have been good. If he can keep that level up, then yeah, maybe maybe he can be um, part of the squad at least at Arsenal moving forward. Okay then, okay. So right, so it's time to close up the show. Unless you've got anything you want to say to the people, no man. Just check out the channel, Curtis Shaw TV. Keep supporting, keep supporting the show. We appreciate you lot watching. And uh, yeah, man. I, I, as you know, I regularly watch your stuff, and yeah. Um, man. A big support of yours. Keep up the good work, man. And um, just to say, man, thanks to all the people out there for continuing to support the show, man. Um, we love that. Send us your messages in. Respond to the um, idea about the poll I had. Mm. What, do you think that this Arsenal team and manager is the real deal? Let us know what you think. Also, I just want to say to uh, people watching the show, don't forget to uh, sign up to the app, man. Flick. The Flick app. You know what I mean? We've got some great AFTV content on that. I'm sure you're going to like it. Sign up to that. You won't be disappointed. And thanks for watching. And um, observe the government's guidelines with regards to COVID and social distancing and everything. Behave yourselves. And uh, have a great weekend. And we look forward to seeing you next week. I'm out. Robbie here from AFTV. We just got to say a big thank you to everybody who follows us across our various channels. Over a million followers on YouTube. Don't forget, you can now also catch us on Reddit. We're on Reddit, so get involved with us on Reddit and also on TikTok. Keep it AFTV, baby, right here.